Are you in any relationship where you're always trying to fix or help the other person? Do you come up with lists and scenarios of what your son, sister, best friend should do to have a better life? Do you obsess even a little about your partner's problems or how they're making you unhappy? You're in the right place. I'm Dr. Abby Metcalf and after 30 years of working directly with literally thousands of clients, I found five ways to successfully get out of codependent patterns and into healthy, fulfilling relationships. And I've created a new free gift that's gonna help you really stop your codependency and I'll share that later in the video. So let's do this. Number one, you gotta practice loving detachment. And I wanna be clear that this is not tough love. And it's a concept that's difficult for a lot of people to, to really understand, but it's loving detachment means that you separate yourself emotionally, spiritually, mentally from another person and what they're doing, saying, or thinking. And now <laughs> detaching yourself from other people's behaviors and words is great in theory and doing it with love, but it can be a difficult thing to actually do in practice. So it, it really takes some courage and strength to see that you can be happy no matter what other people do. Again, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying it's very possible. I've done a whole podcast on this. I have a three-step process for doing loving detachment effectively. So make sure you check it out. Of course, all links are below this video. Number two, you cannot control other people. I know I've been trying for years. It doesn't work. No matter how much you push, manipulate, cajole, threaten, ultimately, you can't really control other people's actions or behaviors. So you got to focus on yourself and not them. You need to find ways to make yourself happy and fulfilled despite other your relationships and what's happening. Don't rely on other people to make you happy. You know, first of all, it's not their job, but also you're going to end up disappointed and frustrated a lot. And you know, because that's what's happening. So you have to find your own sources of happiness that really you can control 100%. And I will tell you that uh, effective boundaries are really the key here. And again, I have a whole thing on that that I will link to below. Number three, don't overprotect others. What your child, boss, partner, parent, whatever does or says isn't you. So I know I feel to some extent that, you know, what my kids do is a reflection of me, but their victories and losses need to belong to them and not me. And that's true for you too. So yeah, your partner might have said something embarrassing at that party last night, but let them deal with the aftermath, not you. Yeah, your parents might need to sell their home because they've made so many poor money decisions, but that's their consequence to deal with. There's, yeah, there's a theme here. And again, with love. People can't learn from their mistakes if they're overprotected. It's your job to support the relationships in your life, not direct or save them. Yeah. Number four is you wanna wait to respond. I want you to take a breath and think instead of reacting or responding right away to whatever gets put in front of you, whatever situation it is. You wanna act, not react. So you can feel compassion for someone else without having to act on it. You can be there for another person without saying a thing. And if you are saying something, you wanna ask questions questions to help them, the other person, clarify their situation and create healthy solutions. But don't fix it for them. You can't give anyone an aha. So don't offer advice or make suggestions. Let them find their way. When you do something for someone else that they could do for themselves, you're not helping them. You are hindering them. It's selfish. I say with love. It is selfish. So you got to be mindful in your moments so that you can act and not react. And uh, I've, again, got great information for that and a free mindfulness starter kit that I'm going to link to below that I'm offering right now that's really going to help you be mindful. So number five, last one, you got to ask yourself this one question. And this is my tried and true for, you, for decades. The next time you're not sure if you're doing too much for someone else, ask yourself this question, who's working harder. Are you working harder than the other person? If you're helping someone else out, I don't care what the situation is, they should be putting in more effort, more thought than you. So you've got to ask yourself that question. 
All right, and like I just said, you know, the secret sauce to all of this is to be mindful consistently because without that, you're on autopilot. You know you've already been doing this and you don't remember any of the great tools in the moments you need to use them. You do, you know, a face palm and later it's like, oh, I should have said this, I wish I had done that. You gotta be, learning to be mindful consistently, it really is super easy and takes, get this minutes a day. You don't have to meditate, do not panic. I have a free mindfulness starter kit below. It's seriously a game changer for all your relationships. I want you to download it and start using it. And uh, cause I love you and I'm trying to help. Uh, that's it for today. I'll be back next week to help you with more tips, more fabulousness to have amazing connected, yummy relationships in your life.